Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, a big release that could help with GPU shortages, the RTX 3080 Ti has been listed, AMD's new software release is even better than we thought, and the RX 7000 series is going to be a massive jump in performance. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, the company Bitmain just released a new teaser trailer that revealed an upcoming Ethereum ASIC called Antminer E9. Now, the reason this matters is that, according to Bitmain, it's actually capable of getting a whopping 3 giga hashes per second, which is equivalent to around 32 RTX 3080s, meaning the huge farms that are buying up GPUs in massive quantities could begin buying these instead. With that said, I doubt enough could be made to satiate the growing demand for miners, then there's the fact that they couldn't resell these like regular gaming GPUs given they're made specifically for Ethereum, and that's it. On the other hand, actually meeting the demand for miners isn't the biggest upside. There's another really good thing about this release for gamers. See, there's a reason basically no one mines Bitcoin with GPUs, even though it's the biggest cryptocurrency out. And that's because the more mining power that's used, the higher the difficulty curve gets to mine. Well, Bitcoin is essentially overrun with ASICs, so it's just not worth it to mine with the GPU anymore, even at these huge levels. Ethereum, on the other hand, has, for the most part, kept ASICs at bay, which is why GPU miners primarily use it. But the release of this could point to a new future where it's just not worth mining on anything but ASICs. Of course, there are other coins, but it can always happen again. Ultimately, I'd argue that this is a good thing. But first, in honor of Intel once again using their 14 nanometer process for the company's 11th gen release, I'm relaunching the 14 nanometer plus 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 infinity mugs. That's right, keep your coffee hot for hours, though not as hot as Intel keeps their CPUs. And now with the new enamel mug, you can show off without fear of breaking it like Intel broke the hearts of gamers everywhere with 11th gen. Get your mug before Intel finally goes 10 nanometers at store.gamermeld.com. Next up for today, I recently went over a shipment of MSI GPUs that were shared on Facebook. The interesting part of that story was the box of RTX 3080 Ti Ventus 3X GPUs. It not only proved that the 3080 Ti was coming, but that the GPU would come with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Well, that GPU was just spotted on the Polish retail site XCOM. Now, what's funny is that, as you can see, it originally said RTX 3080 Ti. Well, now it just shows a 3080, yet it still says 12 gigabytes of memory, so it's clearly still the 3080 Ti. Either way, the delivery date is marked as soon, though you aren't able to pre-order it just yet. Basically, that May 26th release date is looking to be more and more accurate. And next up, we have a really interesting exclusive from Tech Power Up. For those who didn't see my story on it, AMD recently released a pretty big update to their Adrenaline software a few days ago, and it offers quite a few new features, though none of them include AMD Super Resolution, which is the company's DLSS equivalent. Well, that disappointment aside, AMD did improve something that they didn't discuss in any of their press information. In this new article from Tech Power Up, they ran some tests while looking at power consumption, and what they found is that some non-gaming related tasks received a massive reduction. For example, the RX 6800, 6800 XT, and 6900 XT all use as much as 72% less power when idle. I mean, we're talking from over 25 watts to well below 10. Not only that, but media playback also offered substantial power reduction you can see that it goes from around 50 watts to just 30. Now, you may notice that the 6700 XT didn't see too much of a difference, but that's probably due to how new it is. AMD likely included these in the 6700 XT's initial driver. Basically, while it's still disappointing that AMD hasn't released their DLSS equivalent, it's nice to see such big improvements in other ways. And lastly for today, we have a huge report that I unfortunately let slip between my fingers from earlier in the month. With that said, it's still a big deal, so let's go over it. The story originally comes from Red Gaming Tech, and in it, they claim that AMD is in fact set to release a chiplet-based design with their next-gen RDNA 3-based GPUs. That is, their RX 7000 series of cards. And of course, that isn't a big surprise given we've seen multiple patents from AMD that shows they're clearly working hard on the tech. 
including the one where they have a unified cache between chiplets. Not only that, but video cards claim the same thing a little while back. Once again, this is a really big deal, because unlike Crossfire, the system would look at the GPUs as a single card, so it wouldn't require any kind of input from developers. Not to mention the fact that they would actually be on the same dime. With that said, he claims that only Navi 31 and Navi 32 will feature a chiplet design, while Navi 33 would remain on a monolithic die, which does make sense. Anyway, according to him, Navi 31 and Navi 32 will include two compute dies and one I.O. die. Not only that, but rumors point to NVIDIA's next-gen, Lovelace, still being based on a monolithic chip, so AMD could be a huge hurdle for NVIDIA come next-gen. With that said, the big thing here is that, according to Red Gaming Tech, AMD is aiming for a whopping two and a half times greater performance at the high end when compared to the RX 6000 series. Now, as far as software goes, Red Gaming Tech claims that things will be fairly similar to RDNA 2, with RDNA 4 set to change things around quite a bit. With that said, according to this, AMD won't be releasing their next-gen GPUs until the second half of next year, but that may be better given I'd like for gamers to actually be able to buy one when they're released. At the end of the day, if AMD is truly able to achieve anywhere near this 25 times goal, NVIDIA had better be worried. And really, if this is true, to which definitely keeps some skepticism with unnamed sources, but if it is, maybe it's a good thing that the RX 6000 series hasn't been available. I mean, we thought it was a big upgrade. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD's RX 7000 series or would you rather be able to get their 6000 cards now? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.